So a good sign of an amazing presentation is that I'm at a loss for words because I don't know what to ask because all the questions I thought of <laughs> answered on the way. <laughs> um, oh. Some technical questions quickly out of the way. Number one, uh, the audience had great fun about you actually having a halo and apparently you deserve it. Uh, I assume that's a reflection of a light. Yes, there's a giant ring light on the ceiling here. I think it's reflecting off of there. So that's a, that's a feature, not a bug. Um, yeah, exactly. Second, and it's a question specifically to you, uh, what tech stack did you build your dev portal on? Oh, the tech stack. Um, so we did React. Um, so we had, uh, we had a couple layers. So we did uh, Mongo, we have Redis, we have GraphQL. Uh, we have React.js, um, and but we also made use of GitHub, right? Because documentation to code, we had GitHub, so we were pulling through the GitHub APIs. So we also use Go. So we had microservices um, written in uh, Go that then pulled from GitHub. The GraphQL talked to that, right? And our React then talked to GraphQL. And then we had MongoDB and Redis, where we, can, we were caching things in Redis as well for fast refreshes, such that, and we made use of GitHub Actions so that if a uh, a product team member, content writer, changed anything, the webhooks would refresh, you know, the Redis, update everything. So then, they, because the idea was, I control the portal, just like I said, that luxury apartment complex, right? But they control their content. So they don't need to go to publish with me or on my schedule. They publish when they want to publish, anytime they want to publish. Thank you. Now, uh, the angle I would like to go into this panel talk with, and we don't have that much time, uh, is because this is about metrics. And I'm really fascinated by this idea of, you know, what people type into the search bar is one of your most important information. Uh, the questions are more telling than the answers. Um, and you were showing that you were inspiring uh, everyone that when they plan anything, think about the analytics. How, you do, how do you want to follow that up? So did you also give a timeline? So uh, in last uh, last, pres uh, last, uh, last conference, Kumar was warning, give enough time for metrics to mature. Don't jump on immediate data. Let it get her mm -hmm. so that you have real information. Now, the porter is relatively new, but you're thinking quite fast uh, pace. So what scale? of time do you leave for metrics and, and take a few examples please before you would um say okay it's worth to look at this now before we would like kill a function before it actually we had enough information whether people use it or not because maybe it wasn't known and then mm -hmm. with Denek, if you could talk about whether um having ai speed this up or would it be possible for ai in natural language processing and search and all that combined, helping to find a point where you have enough information of what are people actually looking for. Okay, Poof. whichever aspect you want to. <laughs> so, you can go first, please. So, so Lara, just, just to rephrase the question, the, the question is whether uh, an AI can help with the uh, getting the metrics uh, right, or how, how did you manage? Like, so you uh, wanted to tickle our fantasies with that NLP help search bar there, yes. okay? Um, yes. Which gathers a lot of information on what people are looking for. But I suspect that I suspect when you ask metrics and when you ask Alvin the what, what time frame, well, like what basically how many data you need to before you act on the metric, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what what this approach that I was like teasing with uh, enables you is like you don't need to wait for all that much data because it's a generative so you can generate the connection for people as they are typing maybe nonsenses right maybe it won't make uh, maybe you know in my case uh, it won't make a real sense to use that uh, result of uh, whatever they wrote in the input but I can give them already integration for that right so where the AI and basically generate, you know, generative models and uh, gen generating uh, basically code and integrations uh, moves us is that we don't need to uh, collect uh, the data uh, for all, you know extended period of time and maybe design an API better. We can just uh, we can just uh, basically give them what they think they want 
and see if there will be more people asking the same questions over the time that these are some you know some top answers some top integrations some top use cases they are looking for that of course depends on the nature of your product maybe you have a lot of users maybe you have just you know a few dozens of users so that also gives you the answer of like what is the time frame but uh, for me you know generating all the things uh, you really can act directly uh, and for me, given the, the speed we were moving at and also thinking ahead uh, as well, I think it also comes down to which metric. Um, it, you saw when I showed you that raw file, right? I was just throwing ideas out there, but then you even saw I bolded them, like this metric is more important, right? And then that metric depends on, and that metric depends on how much time, right? Certain metrics need less time for metrics probably want more time. And you're right, when we put it, our main goal was to make sure we were instrumented first, right? Make sure we instrumented, for those scenarios that we think were important. And then what we did with those results, we did take with a of salt, as you mentioned. Like in, when we first released, we were like, okay, is it using it? Oh, 10 people used it. Okay, well, wait, is it just us? <laughs> right? Um, you know, and then we, you know, and then over time, I think you do need, you know, a decent amount of time for whatever metric you're looking for first, right? So for example, the create accounts in in five months, I can solve like, hey, this these people are using this, right? Uh, that's this is wonderful news, right? Uh, even if you saw the code snippets, even even that 37 people using Java, if that team, the Commerce Hub team, had no idea what to do, they can at least take action even with a little bit of data, right? At least that, because it allows them to move quickly. So I think it's also, what are your goals, right? What are your goals? And therefore, again, that goes back to what your goals are, what metrics you want, and then how much time you need for that to give you an idea, right? As I mentioned earlier, sometimes just go with your instinct as a deck, right? You already have an idea of probably what they want. Some of your data is there to validate you as well, and then you can change afterwards. And this should definitely be the input for an API product owner. I'm not sure, Alvin, if you have such an institution uh, th there, but uh, you know, a person who basically looks at these metrics and evaluates, yeah. you know, maybe we need to add this to that API or change, you know, resources or add this new capabilities like that. So uh, that yeah. person, that persona, should be basically defining those metrics. Yes, yes. And we did partner um, with those internal product teams. We actually sent a survey to them. It's like, what would you like us to collect? So again, we didn't do it in a silo. I should mention that as who one of our tenants for our, when we built the team as well, when we built the studio, was being actively transparent and open. So we created our own customer advisory council of the internal product teams, right? Those are our partners, right? What do you, what do you do? Because they know their customers better than I do at times, right? Especially the little quirks um, and, and so forth. So we asked them, what do you guys want to track? What do you want to see? I know what I want to see from the studio. Because now you'll know which API you want to know which markdown file they're in. It's like, oh, but then they have completely. Uh, you were breaking up a little bit. Can you repeat the very last sentence? Oh, uh, the, the last sentence was that um, I completely agree. Right? We, we we created that advisory council and then we made sure we knew what they wanted as well. We even sent out, we did send out a survey to them, right? To say like, what do you want to see? And we'll see an overlap actually, right? Because I had the same ideas. Um, and then, you know, then we you know disseminate that information, right? On a, on a self-service basis, right? So they can come get it and see what they want. Mm -hmm. As a closing, hi, um, one question came up. Um, do you know portals or a product that are documented in a way that you would say, wow, like the business and the product documentation is there? So Zdenek uh, had the, <laughs> the same I, list. <laughs> I, had a, I had a heads up. So I was thinking really, really uh, about the answer. And I like what Anna actually posted there. And, and uh, I didn't know Talkdesk. Mm -hmm. But uh, looking at it, I really like this uh, business problem solving context in in the documentation. So there is one link in the in the answer that I actually really like. As for the product, that's quite simple. Like all the APIs in the commodity space, again, text messages, uh, sending emails, where there's a lot of providers, they totally compete on you know clarity and communicating it, and they uh, they they are doing a good job. So if I mention Stripey or Twilio, there will be no you know new names uh, that I'll be mentioning here. So anything that is focused on on not the product tutorials but the use cases that you might have for their APIs, that's a good example of a of a product uh, uh, 
you know, uh, aspect of that uh, what I was talking about. As for the business, I don't know of any. <laughs> like that's that's it's it's really that bad you, because that's 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 the biggest actually problem with the apis to me it's this bridge between developers and the business people and they need to kind of understand and work together uh and you know to to basically deliver the value and very often business people don't understand apis and and uh and uh, let alone the business processes in the company are not really fully understood or followed by the developers so this is the probably worst area at this point in time especially when you have a certification program when you need your uh somebody who integrates with you when you want to you know sort of allow them to use your api when you want to certify them and when you want to examine how they are integrating with then documenting those i i have some examples open but i would not say they are pretty but at least explain that the, there is the certification pro, pro, uh, program and try to communicate uh what uh what people should be expecting because th that's where it's handed over to probably some certification team whatever that means mm -hmm. and you are looking at days and maybe weeks in that certification process and that's of course very frustrating for developers and uh, I, I haven't seen this one documented well. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I, I would agree have... with you as well. Yeah, like I said, we definitely, like I said, there are definitely really good people out there already, like Stripe and doing a good job. Uh, one thing I would add too is I think we definitely, for developers, we want to get to the part where we have to use very little of the doc, right? Getting more towards, hey, here's the code, here's an SDK, here's an app builder, you're done. Right, integrate faster integration. You even have to look at code sometimes. Uh, I mean, sorry, look at documentation sometimes. Um, and the problem you mentioned of the the business uh, and the developer. So we actually had that in mind when we were developing the developer studio because we knew product managers are going to show up. Hey, is this the right API? Is this the right company we want? Is this the right product that we want? So we had to our our site had to do both things. Explain to a developer exactly what they need through their use case. Right? You want to take uh, a transaction. You want to you know do a return. Do this, call it, here's this code snippet, go right away. But to a product manager or a business analyst trying to figure out, hey, is this the right product? Right, we had to make sure that was described very well, right? Um, and we wanted to make sure, again, the page looked right, it focused things to people. But it was also hard because I don't control the content. Right? I had to work with the product teams to make sure that that happens. But we did our best like, to everything. Uh, what actually, one of the, a little bit of sneak, sneak peek spoilers, uh, our new homepage is trying to unify those two personas into one homepage. Mm -hmm. So you can do both. Whoever lands on the site will tell you where to go. And then, as you mentioned for um, your last point as well, I was also thinking, um, I'm hoping that maybe our studio could be Zedek, that one that will impress you, that will bring it all together, right? <laughs> That'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know if people have the time, but I cannot leave this out. Uh, what metrics would you follow to measure uh, whether your business documentation is good enough? What would you check? Oh, time spent, journey, qualitative feedback. How would you know? How would you know the absence of things? Yeah, right. I, I so that's why one of the things, like again, for our, our star, right, we always said productivity, right? And what is a good measurement of productivity? Does that mean integration time, right? If the faster they integrate, that might mean your docs are good, right? Or again, you don't need docs; they integrate so quick. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I know, but I'm just saying. Right? <laughs> I mean, we we'll always need some docs, error codes, things like that. Uh, the, you know, the API Explorer technically is, falls in the, the world of documentation, uh, but to get you kickstarted right away. Um, so I think I think it's a very tricky thing, and that's one of the things actually I've been trying to figure out defining next because we're in you know our third year of the developer studio, and we're now trying to like what is how do you measure true productivity. Is mm -hmm. it how fast they can go? Like I said, the time that's on the page can be mean either thing. When I was looking at the metrics recently, uh, you know, engagement was two minutes. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Two minutes mean they understood what to do and moved on? Or two minutes, this is not what they want, and they left and went to Stripe, right? I, you know, how do I determine what that really means? I think I would need more metrics, you know, contextually to provide me with more context. Mm -hmm. You can tell, like if, if you are in the docs, if you are displaying the, let's say in examples, uh, the key for uh, to be used by, by that user, you can tell in theory 
when they make a call with that key, right? That's that's giving you a good signature. I mean, right. it, it would be very difficult to track. It it is possible. Uh, that would be maybe the golden metric. Like somebody came, they just, just they just sign it up in a source service scenario. They got their key. What's the time between uh, that key being generated and a, a call with that key? It's not necessarily the docs only. It's a lot of things, but it it can be measured. It can be tracked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, if people would like to pick this up, so we're going to publish the recaps and there we're going to put probably your LinkedIn profile link, but just in case they're burning with a question right now, uh, would you mind putting into the, the chat here how they could communicate with you? And that's not necessarily direct contact, but anything that you're willing to take questions through. And in the meantime, I thank you very much for this. Uh, it was enlightening and inspiring. And uh, I wish success to both programs. Hmm, thank you. Thank you, Laura. It was a pleasure. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can always reach me. I'll, I'll put my uh, Twitter handle in the chat. Or, yeah. yeah this was a lot of fun. <laughs> so thank you again. Thank um, you.